A cool September breeze sweeps across Philadelphia. The smell of autumn sparks the memories of great Quaker pasts. It's long enough. It's good. Penn wins. Penn wins. Penn wins the Ivy League title. Penn wins the Ivy League title. For these hundred men, they've but one goal in sight to stand victorious regardless of the fight. For the red and blue, this isn't a game, but instead, a way of life. Eventually, pain will be pushed aside, and victory, the only thing in sight. But before the victories come, new direction is given. You believed in the coaches, you believed in yourself. With hopes that this mighty program will be risen. Through time, these gridiron gladiators will come together, and as they do, the wins come too. Donald Pansiello will take it all the way to the house for the Penn touchdown. Overmatched opponents become obsolete, and long-standing rivals quake in defeat. The Quakers will knock off the Crimson, putting them in line for an Ivy League championship. And as that September breeze becomes a November chill, those hundred warriors have resurrected the Philadelphia Gridiron Thrill. The Penn Quakers, a share of the 2015 Ivy League title. A return to greatness echoes in the stands as opponent after opponent falls to the Quaker demands. Four rings in seven years leaves Franklin Field full of cheers. It is why it has become tradition to call Pennsylvania champion. after the conclusion of the fall football season, that after an illustrious career, Coach Magnolia will be stepping down as head coach, and at that time, our associate head coach, Ray Ferrari, will assume the position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a motto, and one thing is hard work, but it's win the day. We can't worry about the winning chance. We have to worry about winning today. Out to the stage to tackle. Watson for the touchdown. The fake. The pass. Greatest team I've ever been around. We had really good football players. We have really hungry football players right now that need to be led in the right direction. When the Penn Quakers kicked off the 2015 season, head coach Ray Priory had a tall order to fill in order to put the red and blue back atop the Ivy League, a place the Quakers so comfortably sat for over two decades. The way I want to leave the University of Pennsylvania is uh, leave it as, as a winner. Penn Quakers! Ivy League champions outright. Freshman year when we won our ring, some of us participated a little bit but didn't have really big roles. Now that we're seniors, it's our job to get the team and the tradition back to where it needs to be. The Priori era began in historic fashion, not just obtaining its first win, but in the manner in which it was achieved. It came on a Thursday night against crosstown rival and number four ranked Villanova a school that had owned Penn for over a century, with the last Quakers win coming way back in 1911. But that meant little to the 2015 Penn Quakers. The only page in the history books that mattered was the one that was about to be written. A swarming defense under the direction of defensive coordinator Bob Benson limited Villanova to just 29 total yards in the first half, and even when they rallied late, 
and had the answer. Watson escapes a tackle, stiffs on to the right sideline, 20, 15, Watson speed to the five, Watson for the touchdown! The deciding play came when Donald Tansiella forced a fumble, taking it 90 yards for the score sealing a 24-13 victory over the number four ranked Wildcats. The ball is loose, losing it twice, and it's picked up by Pantiello. Down the right sideline, Pantiello is gone, not go! <laughs> Touchdown, Don Pantiello! Oh. It was the school's first ever win over a top five team on the road. And just the third time they've ever beaten a club ranked so high in the polls. You won that game because you emptied the tank. You gave it everything that you guys had. Everything you had. You believed in the coaches. You believed in yourselves. Okay, I'm so damn proud of you guys. I can't tell you. If defense were the story against Villanova, the high-flying offensive attack took center stage a few weeks later against Columbia. It was on a cold afternoon in New York, and early on, the Lions would have the edge, taking a 7-0 lead, at least until the Quakers came storming back. Just two plays later, all Ivy League first-team quarterback Alec Torgerson hit senior star Ryan Kelly for the tying score, and from there, the route was on. 35 unanswered points followed, and 42 in total, in a five-touchdown victory. It was Priory's first Ivy League win, and from there, the ball began rolling downhill and the winds continued to pile up. The Quakers offense, under the watchful eye of offensive coordinator John Reagan, put on an aerial attack in front of a nationally televised audience against Yale on family weekend, with Torgerson throwing for 350 yards and four TDs, and Trey Solomon adding 120 yards on the ground. Torgerson, another touch pass, and look at that. Running to his right, sets down Penn. That's Ryan O'Malley. Back to Solomon, first down Penn. Hard running, he's still going. Pearson holds it in. Trey Solomon, hole off the left side, cut back. Touchdown, Quakers. It resulted in Quakers' highest offensive output in over four years, a 34-20 win over the Bulldogs. And yet somehow, that same offense was even better a week later against Brown. In a road game in Providence, it was probably the home-standing Bears who wished they could sneak out of town. Just minutes into the game, Torgerson hit his star sophomore, Justin Watson, on a 79-yard bomb. This one could go the distance as Justin Watson has it at the 20, 15, 10, 5, and a touchdown. So just like that, the Quakers connect Torgerson to Watson. And from there, the Quakers were unstoppable. Torgerson back to pass, dumps it off underneath to Solomon. Solomon makes the catch in the first down run inside the five, spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Quakers. Seven TDs for Penn's offense. Five takeaways on defense. Fires deep downfield for Strahan, and he's intercepted. Picked off by the Quakers. The Bears give it right back. And more points than any Penn team had scored in over a half a decade. Final score, Penn 48 to 28, and a game which wasn't nearly as close as the box score indicated. If the Brown game was the most dominant win of the season, a game against Princeton a week later was one of the most thrilling. In front of a homecoming crowd at Franklin Field, Penn fell down 20 to 10 at the break. And even after a rally, Princeton had a chance to win. A short field goal with just seconds to go was all that was left for a Tigers victory and eliminate the Quaker Ivy League title dreams along the way. From 35 yards for the win. The snap was good. The hold was perfect. Yet, just as it seemed that all hope was lost, that an Ivy League title was slipping out of the grass of the Quakers, well, Donald Panciello showed up just when his team needed him the most. Blocked! The perfect string of field goals for Meek and Princeton is over. And overtime coming up here in Philadelphia. Panciello's block saved the season, and the Penn offense did the rest. The thing. Yet, they say that to be the best, you've got to beat the best. Something that Penn had a chance to do on the second to the last weekend of the season. The opponent, Harvard, the defending Ivy League champions. 
what looked like a matchup of the Ivy League's two top teams quickly turned into the Justin Watson Show. Down the middle, Watson catches, and he's going to make it to the end zone. Touchdown, Justin Watson goes 68 yards. The sophomore receiver doesn't just have his best game in a Quakers uniform, but one of the best games ever for a Penn team player. Watson on the handoff. At the 25 to the 30. Down the sideline. He has a step. He could go all the way. They will get to him. 79 yards for Justin Watson. And the Quakers now lead 34-25. He tallied 249 all-purpose yards, including over 100 yards rushing and receiving, and the defense did the rest, as Penn shocked the Crimson at home. And that'll be intercepted! The Penn Quakers are 44 seconds away, putting them in line for an Ivy League championship. The victory broke a 22-game win streak for Harvard, including 16 straight in Ivy League play. All that stood in the way of the Quakers claiming an Ivy League title was a senior day showdown with Cornell. Sun is shining, football is in the air. It was a game that proved to be no showdown at all. Penn jumped out early and left nothing to chance. Looking for Watson, leading it down the right sideline. Watson makes the catch at the five yard line and he's out of bounds. First and goal for the Quakers. Option left, they pitch it to Shane Hour, has the corner and has the touchdown. And the Quakers are off and running. They lead Cornell six to nothing. They run the option right. Fiori's going to throw. He's got a man wide open in the end zone and it's caught for a touchdown. Tight end Ryan O'Malley. Warmers back to throw. Floating it down the middle. Watson's wide open and he has it at the five and rolls into the end zone. Untouched for a touchdown. The Quakers scored in their first four possessions and spent the final few minutes celebrating in style. What was once just a pipe dream was now a reality. The Penn Quakers were your 2015 Ivy League champions. And can you point to one thing or one characteristic of this team that led them to this point? Grit. Grittiest team I've ever been around. For Ray Priori's club, it was the first conference championship since 2012 and 17th overall. It was also the first of what is sure to be many league titles behind Priori's lead. But more than adding another trophy to the case, the victory served as something more. It allowed several Quakers legends wearing the red and blue for the final time to head off in style. There was Tyler Drake, the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year, whose 17 and a half sacks ranked in the top five in school history. Oh, big hit, who else? Tyler Drake. And fellow senior stars like all Ivy League first teamer, Tanner Thexton. All Ivy League second teamers Ian Dobbins, Lucas Nassim, and Ryan O'Malley. And honorable mention nominee Dan Connaught. Two things, okay? Give me your heart tonight mm -hmm. for four quarters and love your brother. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Love your brother. Oh, yeah. Just got three and tight. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. While eligibility for senior class might be up, they will always be Penn Quakers. They graduate with two rings and will always have the satisfaction of knowing that they return Penn football to their rightful place atop the sport. Follow me on down through the shadows. Take my hand. No, the sun isn't setting on the Penn football empire. Instead, with the greatest one-year turnaround in college football, it is just now beginning to rise again.